What do all iconic scenes have in common? And I'm not limiting this question just to One Piece or even anime and manga. Seriously, what unites any iconic scene that you love, no matter if it's in a book, a movie, an anime, or even a photograph? The most fundamental answer to this question that I personally came up with is that they all manage to create real, heartfelt emotion. And my reasoning for this answer is this. A scene can be iconic for a variety of reasons, right? Because it's incredibly funny, sad, epic, horrifying, heartwarming, you name it. But in the end, as diverse as these moments might seem on the surface, on the most fundamental level, stories are all about making us feel something. We simply love losing ourselves in fictional worlds and epic adventures because it allows us to experience moments we could never have in real life. However, as any aspiring writer will know, actually creating authentic and impactful emotions in a scene is anything but easy. The fact that Oda has managed to create so many of these moments really speaks for the understanding that he has for his craft and, frankly, without it, his story would probably never have been able to run for as long as it has. As we will explore more and more throughout this series of videos, the most iconic moments in One Piece all do an exceptional job at making us feel a certain way, and many can undoubtedly be described as tearjerkers. What I found truly fascinating about this, and I think you might as well, is that there is no one formula of how to achieve this, and especially manga and anime have a number of unique tools. Therefore, the scene we will be breaking down today will be an absolute masterclass in how to create a strong emotional response in your audience. It is one of the highlights of the Water 7 and its lobby arc, which is coincidentally my favorite arc in the entire story so far. I think you know what moment I'm talking about. Well, mainly because it's in the title of this video, fair enough. But I think even without that, it would probably have been easy to guess which one I'm talking about. Ugh, goosebumps. I'm really happy you guys seem to enjoy this new series as much as I do, because I'm frankly having a real blast rereading and rewatching these scenes. And at the risk of sounding a bit cocky, it's also so much fun building an entirely new format from scratch that isn't out there yet. So thanks for sticking with me, and also thank you for sharing all your amazing ideas and thoughts with me. Okay, but now, enough sweet talk I think, it's time to go through some fields again. So grab yourself a cup of coffee, and some tissues maybe, and let's get into this beauty of a scene. Before we can get into the analysis part, I will do a quick recap. So if you want to skip that, you can simply jump to the timecode up here. And the corresponding chapters are 391 to 399. And for the anime, it's episode 278, in case you want to read or watch along. The scene takes place at the height of the Ennis Lobby arc. The Straw Hats have fought their way to the Tower of Justice and start their legendary walk to Ennis Lobby, where they face Robin and the members of CP9. Robin is shocked to see them here, and tells them that she won't return to them and that she wants to die, all to protect her newly found friends from the wrath of the world government. This is followed by Robin's flashback and the events of Ohara, where we truly get to know Robin and her true personality and dreams for the very first time. Reliving her tragic coming-of-age story and all the hate, rejection and betrayal she had to endure, she fears that she will bring nothing but unfortunate upon those around her, even though she clearly loves the Straw Hats at this point. And what she fears the most, even more than death, is to be abandoned and betrayed once again, just as Crocodile and so many others had done to her before. At this point, she truly has given up on life. She once again warns Spandam about the horrors of the Buster Call, who carelessly threatens to use it on the island. And he asks Robin how anybody could ever not see her as a burden, when her enemy is the world government itself, pointing at the flag on top of the Tower of Justice and asking Luffy whether he truly understands who he's actually facing here. Luffy, however, coldly replies that he understands very well who Robin's enemies are, and without so much as a hint of uncertainty, he orders Usopp to shoot down the world government's flag towering over the island. Usopp steps forward and burns down the flag, while all of the Straw Hats watch with stoic faces. And with this, 
the Straw Hats have now officially declared war on the world, and thus taken away Robin's reason for protecting and rejecting them. And then, Luffy tells Robin to say that she wants to live. Recalling her tragic past, Sal's final words to her that she will surely find Nakama one day, and finally Usopp asking her to trust in Luffy. She finally breaks free of her mental prison and shouts her dream. <laughs> After this moment, Frankie also declares his love for the Straw Hats and destroys the plans for the Pluton. And then the bridge lowers and the Straw Hats, as well as CP9, prepare for battle. Okay, so what makes this scene so special? How is Oda able to create such an intense amount of emotional response with this moment here? There are a couple of things I want to get into, but the most fundamental element, I believe, is emotional contrasting. What makes Robin's words here so powerful is not the words themselves, but the chain of emotional sequences leading up to that moment. At the outset of Ennis Lobby, we have grown to more or less accept Robin as a part of the crew. She has traveled with the Straw Hats to the Sky Islands and established a rather nice presence on the ship. However, her character is still shrouded in much mystery, and neither we the reader nor the crew really knows whether it's okay to fully trust her as an ally yet. Her abduction by the CP9 is kept purposefully ambiguous by Oda, where we only slowly learn that something is happening against Robin's will here. Luffy is the only one that truly seems to understand her right from the start. His unique ability to sense a person's true character and their intentions might even have been the reason that he saved her from the tomb in Alabast in the first place. He must have been aware right from the start of all the pain and sorrow that Robin had been carrying in her heart, and knew that she was looking for a place that she belonged. Thus, he immediately takes his crew and follows her to Anna's lobby to take her back, knowing that this is what she truly wants. And so, even if we don't know about Luffy's ability at this point, seeing our main character disinvested and determined, we simply can't help but become involved into Robin's rescue as well. This is followed by the crew's raid on the island and their fight against time before Robin is ultimately shipped away through the gates of justice, where she will be forever out of reach. This builds enormous urgency and raises the stakes for every single moment during the arc, leaving us on the edge of our seats whether or not Luffy will make it in time. At the same time, seeing his newly gained abilities with Gear 2 gives us some hope that this is actually a battle that might be won. The epic walk to Ennis Lobby and the determination of the crew to get their Nakama back is a pure firework of euphoric shivers for me. However, this is immediately countered by Robin's sudden anger and her declaration that she wants to die. We can kinda tell here that there is something more going on, that she does indeed want to be saved, but why in the world does she behave this way? And this is when we finally get the flashback into her past, the harsh and lonely childhood she had, how she lost the only place that ever accepted her, and how she had been on the run from the world at large for her entire life, having no one to turn to. Confronted with, in my opinion, the most tragic backstory of any Straw Hat, we get punched in the gut with a wave of sadness, pity and dawning comprehension of who Robin truly is as a person. Suddenly, we understand her character fully, and it makes the events until now and the current situation just the more impactful and engaging. Now, me stopping the clip right at this moment might have made you twitch a little, or maybe you even felt a bit annoyed, wanting to see what happens next, how Robin reacts to this. This is the type of engagement you want to reach as a writer when it comes to capturing your audience. This moment is charged with anticipation and emotion, and is what makes it so memorable. You simply can't help yourself but wanting to see what happens next. And this is of course what makes Robin's words the ultimate catharsis after building up the tension towards the scene for countless chapters, while at the same time setting the mood for the second half of the arc and the fights that will follow. So at this point we are 110% involved in this mission to save Robin and want to see our heroes succeed against an also amazing cast of antagonists. Now, moving on to the scene itself, one of the things that stood out to me the most here was the crazy amount of symbolism it contained. 
In general, Oda loves filling his story with symbols and references. Some are small and arc-specific, while others span the entirety of the story. And so, there are some rather obvious symbols here, like the walk to the tower, which directly references the walk to Along Park, or Usopp shooting down the flag, which is generally known to be a declaration of war throughout history. But for instance, the flag itself also symbolizes a lot here. The world government as a whole, and the political system behind it. It represents the power of the world and the weight it has towering over the entire island, and more specifically, over Robin. Thus, burning it down does not only mean the Straw Hats declaring war on the world, but it also symbolizes the influence that the world government had on Robin vanishing by burning her doubts and fears to ashes. The fire itself, meanwhile, is therefore a literal light in the darkness for her, as she finally accepts and understands that Luffy and the crew truly have come solely for her sake and with no ulterior motive. She is truly able to trust someone again for the very first time since losing her home. I think the anime does an especially wonderful job here at visualizing this, showing her leaving behind her darkness and going into the light. Fantastic visual symbolism here, where she finally is able to join her friends with all she is. This transition also includes another symbol of Water 7 and Ennis Lobby overall. Masks. What they represent is pretending to be someone you're not, and literally putting on a false face. We can see this used with Frankie, the CP9, and of course with Usopp. But Robin in many ways also is putting on a mask throughout the arc, trying to push Luffy and the others away. And so in this scene, Luffy metaphorically breaks that mask and she's able to show her true face and true intentions, finally being able to be the person that she really is. Thus, the I wanna live moment stands in direct contrast to the I wanna die moment just a little earlier, really hammering home the impact that the Straw Hat's actions and words have had on her in just a small amount of time. She has now fully accepted that she's actually worth something, and that she's worth to be cared for and rescued by her friends. Meanwhile, the golden snail held by Spandam and the destructive buster call it can summon symbolize Robin's traumatic childhood and all her suffering that she had to go through by having to experience it. And finally, I think it's fair to say that the Tower of Justice itself also is a symbol. The name seems to be quite ironic at first, since it seems to show the hypocrisy and twisted sense of justice of the world government. However, with Oda putting in another twist here, at the end of the arc, the Tower of Justice has actually lived up to its name, as Robin truly does get what she deserves. Freedom, a new family that loves her, and a place that she belongs. I would actually say that it's a bit cheesy, but that stuff is just so damn powerful. Damn you, Oda. Now, how is the character's body language and the dialogue in the scene implemented? Well, I think the portrayal of Robin's emotion speaks pretty much for itself. The facial expressions and the conflict within her are wonderfully drawn by Oda, and the anime also does a great job at capturing her emotional transformation here. The way that she's finally able to cry and let out all these emotions that she had suppressed for so long are simply overwhelming to see. And beside that, I think the scene also manages to really bring out her inner dialogue in a very believable and convincing way here, giving us some crucial insight into her inner world. Next to Robin, I think the scene also has some wonderful language for the other Straw Hats. Of course, there's Luffy, whose intense and emotion-filled speech towards Robin is one of the most important moments for his character arc in my opinion, giving us some of these occasional moments where Luffy's true capabilities as a leader come clearly to light. And what about the other Straw Hats you might think? Well, I think I have rarely seen a manga or anime do such a fantastic job with silence as this scene does. Because none of the Straw Hats says anything. They don't address Robin, they don't cry out in shock when Luffy tells Usopp to shoot down the flag, they don't show fear or anger or really any sign of emotional effect this moment could have or maybe even should have on them. No, they decide to simply stand there next to Luffy side by side with a stoic and determined look on their face, 
radiating nothing but pure confidence and trust in their captain and dedication to getting their friend back. Sadly, show don't tell is an important skill in storytelling that somehow is heavily underused in anime and manga and I feel especially in shonen, where often everything is explained so everyone in the audience can really get what's happening right now. But I think this is a perfect example how powerful silence can be and simply letting the visual speak for itself. Just watch. This is what gives me goosebumps. I don't need everyone in the crew to say out loud that they really want to save Robin. This is the way to do it and to get me on board with this scene. Finally, next to Robin, I think it's also worth mentioning the change we see in some other characters in this moment in terms of body language and dialogue. Frankie, for instance, finally completely changes from antagonist to ally in this moment, being deeply moved and showing his true colors as well as his affection for the Straw Hats here. This results in him destroying the plans of the Pluton and fully following into the steps of his beloved master Tom, who worked for the former pirate King Roger during his time. A quite overlooked moment, I believe. And then there's of course Spandom, who changes from a sense of superiority and arrogance to fear and panic once the flag is taken down. And while his character might be annoying beyond help, it does a wonderful job at getting us fired up for his defeat and also shaping Luchi to be the way cooler and more threatening antagonist of this arc. And speaking of Luchi, his face in this scene goes from indifferent and annoyed to full ecstasy and bloodthirst. Something that hypes up the second half of the arc and his later encounter with Luffy even more. The scene is also heavily accented by a great use of sound effects and music. The flag of the world government flying heavily in the wind, the silence as Usopp shoots down the flag, the sound of the flames mixing in with Robin's tears, as well as the music when Robin finally breaks free, are all greatly chosen and do the scene justice, I think. Also, special props here to Luffy's and Robin's voice actors, both of which do a wonderful job here carrying the heavy emotions in the scene with their performance. One thing I think is not quite optimal here though is Spandam's voice acting. I'm not quite sure why that is, but I think there was just so much more potential here to portray him in a more unpredictable and threatening way compared to the mostly comic voice that we get for him in the end. Just a small side note. Now, the last thing I want to look at is the framing in the scene. In general, I think Anna's Lobby has great framing and camera movement overall. However, there are some things that really stood out to me. The scene opens up with a wide shot of Anna's Lobby, showing the literal and metaphorical chasm between Robin and the crew, isolating her from her friends. I think this is quite purposefully done here, and I simply love the effect it has on the reader. And in general, of course, the entire island's theme is focused heavily around these monstrous structures here, showing the power of the world government and giving the stage an epic feel. Thus, when showing Anna's lobby even smaller before the enormous gates of justice with the world government's icon on it, and when Robin says that no one's ever allowed her to follow her own dreams, the giant iron gates tower threateningly over the entire moment. The same goes for the government flag that Spandam points up to, overlooking the entire scene as a sort of protective force. And also, I'm a big sucker for this panel here, where the straw hats stand at the edge of the abyss, absolutely fearless, staring down the CP9. And the way that the CP9 members mirror that pose in just the same way creates a fantastic sense of balanced opposition and contrast. Not only does it foreshadow the battle, but it also foreshadows the similarities between both groups, with the CP9 being a quote-unquote more evil version of the Straw Hats. And last but not least, Luffy's and Robin's matching close-up shots, with Robin answering her captain's call and fully becoming part of his crew, beautiful. So what is the overall purpose of this scene? And how does it fit into the context of the story? Well, of course, Anna's lobby as an arc overall plays a major role in building the world and driving the story forward. But focusing on just this one scene here, I think that if there is one thing in particular it achieves above all else, is that it gives major development to four of the Straw Hats. 
Robin, Luffy, Usopp and Frankie. Let's look at this list from last to first. You know, so we can have some more dramatic ending to this video. Storytelling. So let's start with Frankie. There is not too much focus on his character in this sequence, and yet in retrospect it is fairly obvious that Oda is already shaping Frankie to become a straw hat here. Witnessing this incredibly emotional and powerful moment between the straw hats serves as a sort of breaking point for him, where he also is finally able to drop his mask and show his emotional and kind-hearted real side, declaring his love for the crew. By burning the plans of the Pluton before Spandam's and the CP9's eyes, he really mimics Luffy's declaration of war on the government and thus also qualifies himself to join them at the end of the arc. In general, I believe that Frankie's arc here in Ennis Lobby is quite underrated, which is to be expected, I guess, when it's overshadowed by Robin's incredible storyline. But nonetheless, I think it's important to appreciate how subtly Oda manages to turn his character around in this moment. Then of course we have Usopp. The entirety of Ennis Lobby serves as Usopp's redemption arc after defying Luffy and leaving the crew in Water 7. While there are many moments that are important to his re-establishment as a member of the Straw Hat crew, like on the sea train with Robin or later at the port, this scene here, where he without hesitation follows Luffy's orders to declare war on the world, might be the most important for him in terms of symbolism and impact. He shows us that he now fully accepts Luffy as his captain and makes another step to becoming a brave warrior of the sea. And while the flag scene is definitely anything but underrated, the role that Usopp plays in it definitely is, I believe. Next, we of course have to talk about Luffy. As mentioned before, I believe that his speech here at the Tower of Justice is one of the best moments for his role as captain of the crew. Oftentimes, Luffy shows his thoughts and emotions through actions and fighting. Here, however, he actually finds the exact right words one would expect from a captain and future pirate king, and it's one of the moments I always remind people of whenever they say that Luffy's not a good leader. Because the point here is that Luffy is becoming a good leader, and it's moments like these that show this growth. When it counts, Luffy can lose his naivety and easygoing nature and become serious. And it's moments like this one here, or the one where he gives Nami his hat, where I think most of us gain the most respect for Luffy as a main character. And that already brings us back to Robin. The way that Oda shows her moment of liberation in this scene, and how he builds up all that emotion and suspense for her character, is simply one of my favorite moments in One Piece, and the reason that this clip easily deserves a spot in this series of videos. Robin in this moment becomes a full-fledged straw hat, and her development from Alabasta until this moment is one of my favorite character arcs of all time. Robin breaking out of her depression and seeing how Salt's words have come full circle is a powerful moment to witness. <laughs> She now finally has found a place that she belongs to after losing the scholars on Ohara, and for the first time she's able to really fully trust someone else. And so in this moment, Robin is prepared to live life to its fullest. Now, while Luffy's speech in this scene is incredibly touching and powerful, coming from the hero of our story, I think it's quite surprising that another iconic moment in One Piece is another speech. However, it doesn't come from Luffy or any other of our heroes, but from none other than the main villain of the story, Blackbeard's speech on Jaya. And so we will be discussing this iconic moment in the next video, so stay tuned for that. Thanks guys, peace.